So how do you take the ho-hum world of alternative indexing and infuse it with some pizzazz? I have absolutely no idea, but that doesn't mean we're not going to try. Coming up on today's ETF Battles, we've got an audience-requested head-to-head contest between two alternative weight ETFs from Invesco. It's RSP versus RWL. Stick around. Welcome to ETF Battles. I'm Ronda Leggy. It's good to see you again. Thank you for being here. Now, the ETF matchups we do on this program come from you, the audience. So if you have got a certain ETF contest that you'd like to see, well, send us your ETF ticker symbols in the comment section below or on our Twitter feed, at ETF Guide. Also, if you see an ETF battle suggested by another viewer that you think makes sense, hit the like button for that suggestion. It'll help us to prioritize the ETF battles that you want to see. Uh, be sure to visit the description section below. We've got links to our program sponsor, Direction Investments, and our program judges. Plus, we've got a waiting list that you should join for our new margin of safety investing tool. Again, all of that's below in the description section. Uh, today's ETF contest is an alternative waiting ETF rumble. Uh, for those of you wondering about the ethnogenesis of alternative weight ETFs like RSP and RWL, well, it's rooted in the idea that traditional market cap weighted indexes are flawed. Personally, I count myself as a survivor of Rob Arnott's PowerPoint presentations explaining this, although I must admit, I did get a little yawny after the first 14 hours. Today's ETF battles was sent to us on Twitter by Chris of New York. He wanted to see RSP go up against RWL. Now, these two Invesco ETFs have different weighting strategies. More on that in a second. Chris also requested to have Cynthia Murphy be a judge for this particular battle, which we're delivering. Wow, all of these special requests. Say, Chris, is there anything else that you'd like us to do? Shall we mow the lawn and run the kids to soccer practice? Judging today's contest is a formidable duo. We've got Cynthia Murphy with Taroso Investments and Shana Sissel with Bonrion Capital. It's Shana's first time to ETF Battles, so welcome to the program. Thank you both for being here. Hey, Ron, thanks for having me again. And Chris, thanks for the vote of confidence. I hope uh, we'll deliver. <laughs> And I'm happy to join for the first time. I'm excited to get going. And it's great to be on with Cynthia, who uh, who I have great respect for. So it's a woman versus woman battle. May the best woman win. Our four battle categories are cost, exposure strategy, performance, and then we're our mystery battle category where our judges can pick that single factor or multiple factors that they feel are crucial to today's contest. Our judges can also nominate wildcard ETFs if they feel there's a better choice elsewhere or they can opt for split decisions. Now, I've got the scorekeeping chores, and at the end of the show, we will announce an overall winner, or it could end in a split decision. We'll just have to see what our judges decide. Let's start with our first category, which is cost. Cynthia, please kick things off. Here on, I am going to give cost to RSP. It, uh, on expense ratio basis, it costs about half what RWL does. Um, it trades something like 50 times the daily volume of RWL at two basis point spreads on average. So it's cheaper, has better liquidity. Uh, RWL is not expensive by any means, but uh, RSP kind of has the edge here. So give it to RSP. Thank you, Cynthia. That's a strong start. Shana, how do you see when it comes to costs? I agree. 20 basis points versus 39 basis points. This is a pretty easy call. It definitely goes to RSP. That takes us next to exposure strategy. So Shana, which of these two ETFs stands out? Well, they take two very different approaches. The RSP strategy being uh, equal weighted uh, gives better exposure to those mid and small cap names in the indice, which traditionally are not large components of the broader uh, market cap weighted. So you're getting better and broader exposure across ma market capitalization. For that reason, this stands out, especially if you think the markets are going to be higher and you think we're going to be in a bull market. Small caps and mid caps tend to outperform. On the flip side, RWL is revenue weighted. So it most heavily weights the companies that generate the most revenue. As a result, much more large cap biased 
it has a quality bias. And more importantly, it tends to eliminate or not weight heavily names that don't produce earnings or revenue. So it is a very different approach uh, to weighting, but it uh, has its own benefits. To me, the winner here is RWL uh, because of the quality bias and the uh, focus on earning power, which when it comes to investing is what everybody wants, companies that are making money, growing money, and that have and generate revenue. Thank you, Shana. Cynthia, you're up next. How do you see it when it comes to exposure strategy before between these two ETFs? Do you agree with Shana's analysis? Um, I agree. I would only add that uh, what I think is interesting about this battle is that both these ETFs are just rearranging the same set of stocks, which are the S&P 500 stocks. But the results end up really different. And I think one of the key differences here is the sector exposures. RWL, because of this focus on revenue, tends to really focus heavily on consumer names. You know, the companies that are out there generating a lot of sales revenue, for example, versus, you know, technology. RSP, the biggest sector exposure in, in RSP is technology. So you get your big names like Walmart, Amazon, Apple. Actually, Walmart and Amazon are not necessarily technology, but you get the, the, the FANG stocks, if you will. So it's a, a little more, uh, you know, expected perhaps than what you see as the top holdings in something like RWL. Um, at the end of the day, they're very different to Shana's point. So I actually... I give it a split decision here because I don't think one is better than the other. I just think they're built very differently and they're tilting in very different ways just by uh, the result of weighting S&P 500 stocks in a different manner. So it's, it's a very interesting category actually for these two. Performance is up next. And Cynthia, break it down for us. How do you see today's ETF battle between these two alternative weight funds? So I admit I was surprised when I went to look at the performance. I expected RSP to be the winner. But if you look year to date, one year, three year, um, I think even as far as five years, RWL has outperformed um, RSP across all those time frames. Uh, I think what's key here is that RSP tends to tilt more stored value. There has been no better story than that in the last several months. So for the time we're in today, uh, I think RSP's uh, RWL, the revenue weighted, is the winner in performance. And actually on a long track record, it has done really well. So I'm going to give it to RWL. Thank you, Cynthia. Shana, you're up next. How do you see it when it comes to performance? I actually agree, but it's important to note that performance is very time-based. You know, so you stop at a point in time and performance can look very different. I bet you if we were doing this exact battle a year ago, we would have a completely different performance winner. But when you do look at it based on today's performance on all time periods, except from inception, RWL does outperform again because value stocks, larger cap and quality stocks have outperformed over the last 12 months and the spread between non-earners and earners value and growth has been very wide over that period. So the extent to the outperformance has really driven those rolling numbers. Uh, so just on performance, based on this point in time, RWL wins. Next up is the mystery battle category. This is where our judges can pick that single factor or multiple factors to make their persuasive arguments. So Shana, what is your mystery battle category and which of these ETFs wins it? I am going to use as a mystery battle category timing, meaning what was best for today if you're an investor? What would I want to put my money in today? And in that case, I would put my money in RWL. I think we're going to be in a very difficult market environment. I think the right way to position portfolios today is to focus on Companies that are earning money, that have revenue, that are quality biased, the value bias tends to do well at this time in the market cycle. This is a product that I think is well positioned to continue to outperform as we go through this very volatile period of Fed tightening, high inflation, rising rates, and just overall difficulty in the market. The lower exposure to technology, I think, will be beneficial for this particular uh, product. And so, in my opinion, Considering what would be the best investment if you were going to start today, I would pick RWL. And to me, that is the winner. That's a solid take. Thank you, Shana. Cynthia, you're up. How do you see it in terms of your mystery battle category? What is it? 
and which of these ETFs wins it? So I was thinking for mystery, something like implementation, but I admit it's a kind of a flimsy uh, mystery category because in truth, I think both of these funds are awesome. Um, I think RSP is an interesting fund because it came, was born in the aftermath of the dot-com bust, was launched in 2003, when you know suddenly we all wanted diversification from your big tech names and equal weighting was a great idea as a way to do that. Um, I think as if you look at a, a repl- as a replacement to core as much as you know as, as a diversifier, uh, I think RSP is a really interesting play because it is just equal weighting your S&P 500 stocks is not really making any other statements about the way these stocks are situated. So I think from a broader adoption story, RSP has an interesting play. Now we've arrived at the part of the program where our judges can give us their overall battle winner. So Cynthia, give it to us. You know, Ron, um, I hate split decisions, but I'm really torn in this category. I think both of these funds are awesome. I I've long, been much longer a fan of RSP than RWL. I, I get the case for both of them. But I, if I have to pick one, I like the simplicity of the story, the equal weighting versus market cap weighting. So you're breaking that, you know, link to just capitalization size. You're, you're, you're breaking that price, stock price link. I mean, it's just an equal weighted portfolio. I like the simplicity of it. Uh, I would give it to RSP. Shana, your final opportunity to weigh in with your overall battle winner. I agree with Cynthia. This was really tough because they are two really great funds at what they do. And I kind of weigh on my um, my history of focusing on value-oriented managers. And so when I look at these two options, I see a lot of value um, opportunity with RWL. With RSP, that kind of leans on my experience working in the small cap universe. Having small caps and being overweight small cap and mid cap is always advantageous, but timing matters and you want to have that exposure, but not at the expense of having companies that don't earn money. So for me, it's kind of a split decision. If I were investing today, RWL is the clear winner, but in a normal bull market, RSP is probably a better choice because of the greater focus on growth names, which tend to do better. So for me, it's really a split decision. If I had to lean one way or another, just based on how I would invest today, RWL would be my overall winner. Well, our judges have weighed in and this tantalizing ETF battle between these two alternative weight ETFs has put us on the edge of our seats According to my battle scorecard, this is going to be a split decision, folks, between RSP and RWL and Cynthia liking RSP for its simplicity. It's been around longer. Um, of course, uh, Shana countering with RWL as her preferred choice for the environment that we're currently in with that quality factor, that quality bias of earnings power. And of course, that's what RWL has. Plus, it leans towards value stocks, whereas RSP is more tilted towards those smaller and mid-cap size companies. And our judges, again, did a great job at breaking down today's ETF battle. A couple of key takeaways. Keep in mind that alternative weight ETFs are subject to market cycles that will either favor or not favor a particular strategy. Finally, no alternative weight strategy wins all the time. So maybe a more balanced approach would be to Use various alternative weight ETFs in conjunction with a core traditional market cap weighted strategy to sort of hedge your bets. Thank you again, Cynthia and Shana, for your provocative analysis with today's alternative ETF weight rumble. Muchas gracias. Thanks, Ron, for having me. Thanks for having me. Visit the description section below for research links to our judges. While you're there, check out the link to our program sponsor, Direction Investments. Plus, you'll see our other viewer resources, again, in the description section below. Check that out. So which ETF battle would you like to see in our next episode? Post your ETF ticker symbols in our YouTube comments section or hit us up on Twitter at ETF Guide. That's our handle. If we choose your ETF battle, you win your choice of an ETF battle shirt or a coffee mug. I'm Ron Legge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.